Good morning, folks. We've got a quiet sun, ripe for negative NAO phase forcing and jet stream blocking, which is going to reintroduce a taste of winter across the eastern half of the U.S. this weekend and into next week. Prepare for those temperatures to plummet. Anyway, let's come over to spaceweathernews.com. We'll find the last 24 hours on our star were silent. No flashes, no lifting and snapping, no surface surging or large ejections, and no transequatorial coronal holes. The X-ray flux displays all but a flat line in solar flaring, and the cause is the continued weak sunspot scenario. New development possible incoming, but the main active region has moved to the departing quadrants and has remained silent across the Earth-facing disk despite having beta polarity. Umbral cores just never got to interact. In 304 angstroms, you can see that the quiet sun has little chance for a rapid change in pace. The brighter spot turning to the right is that sunspot group, and you should be able to see that that's the only one we've got. Coming now to the solar wind, stream density in orange is in the normal range, speed and plasma temperature dropping down from what wasn't even a significantly enhanced wave in the stream. Speed is purple, temperature is green. In fact, the shift in the phi angle, the blue line, is all that brought the KP index back up off the floor after nine hours at zero to end the day yesterday. Coming now to gong, what you need to notice is the equatorial coronal fields. Despite the lack of low latitude sunspots, the coronal holes are confined to high latitude with the solar minimum magnetic structure beginning to settle in. That is easily visible here in 211 angstroms with the dark patches just north and south. Not sure if any of them have a chance to impact Earth with their intensified solar wind streams. Let's take a peek now at some space news from the last day. Cassini's grand finale at Saturn has begun and the first dive imagery is now published in raw form. Further processing and the remaining dives will eventually offer a full suite of close-up observations of Saturnian meteorology. The video and article linked in your list today contains a good deal of description beyond just the video, including links to learn more about Cassini and its planned demise after the craft dives into the atmosphere in September. Up next... The first Harvick Harrow cosmic jet at a brown dwarf has been discovered. It had once been thought that these low mass objects lacked the power to drive cosmic jets, but the more we look into deep space, the more we find. The pictures are pretty, but it is a tier one complexity article for a layman. Last bit of space news, Vista took a peek at the small Magellanic cloud and the ESO has put out a release detailing the results. The cloud has a number of components that stretch far from the central core, which does look like a tiny distant galaxy in its own right, with stars apparently on a line in the cosmic jet. Remember, we've seen numerous examples released of both galactic and stellar formation along cosmic lines. You might remember the pearls on a string story from a few years ago. It is worth taking some time and peeking through to see some of the non-homogeneity of object distribution in the cluster, as well as getting a feel for the transition between the optical wavelengths and infrared wavelengths of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Eyes open in the southeast U.S., that system is drawing from significant atmospheric convective potential energy in the Gulf and will transform the Gulf moisture into serious storms by tonight. Floods and severe weather risks are high. We'll have the rest of the world's weather as well as shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.